No matter what this war is called in the Kremlin, in fact, it is simply genocide. And the main task of it is the destruction of everything Ukrainian, state, nation, identity, you name it. Good afternoon. This is Henry Keane at UATV English. Happy to give you the hard truth in easy terms, as always, for the whole free world, directly from Ukraine. The Kremlin is waging war against Ukraine, aimed at destroying Ukrainian statehood erasing Ukrainian identity and killing any Ukrainians who disagree with such an approach and all Ukrainians, of course, disagree. Otherwise, you simply are not Ukrainian enough. Russian propaganda openly calls on and encourages the occupying forces to commit genocide. As simple as that. Genocidal rhetoric of the Kremlin can be traced back to 2014. The highest officials of the Russian Federation, in particular Putin and his deputy in the Security Council of the Russian Federation, Medvedev, resort to genocidal rhetoric easily and I would say with pleasure. Russian state media in turn is happy to publish materials with genocidal rhetoric. Genocidal rhetoric is also contained in Russian school textbooks and these are indispensable in the educational process in the territories controlled by Moscow. After all, Russian legislation itself contains norms that legitimize discrimination against Ukrainians on the basis of nationality. The rhetoric of Russian state propaganda clearly proves the intent, the extermination of everything Ukrainian. Tell me now that this is not a genocide and all Russian propagandists who are direct accomplices in the crimes of occupiers will applaud you, no doubt. None of us should underestimate the strength of the enemy against us. Ukraine knows that the enemy is not weak, restless, but Ukraine knows how to overcome it. Like last year, Russia seeks to destroy our country, our lives. Like last year, we must destroy the occupier. Ukraine is doing this. And today, dear Ukrainians, please thank those who have put their strengths and lives on the line of to defend Ukraine and Ukrainians. A study by the Center for Strategic Communications and Information Security, genocidal rhetoric of the Russian regime was presented in Kiev. It will become part of the evidence base against Russian propaganda and propagandists, because any crime must be punished and, of course, the calls for genocide. What if you are unable to win on the battlefield? Try to win in the mind of yours. And that is exactly what Russia is doing, and doing in a Russian way. It's trying to undermine the Ukrainian stance and, of course, to spoil the relationship with partners, provoking conflicts and disbelief. Russian special services actively use the state of stress of Ukrainian society to artificially cause more stress and tension. Moscow is trying to provoke internal conflicts between the military and political leadership of Ukraine, between civilians and the military, between the people and the authorities, as well as between different groups of Ukrainian society. Its goal is to break and spoil everything and anything in the rear and in the front. To cause more tension and more despair, the enemy is attacking Ukrainian cities, attempting to paralyze the economy with lengthy air raids, blocking the exchange of prisoners of war and trying to disrupt anything there is to disrupt. Russia is trying to discredit Ukraine in front of the Western world, presenting it as a failed state. Well, Port calls the kettle black, right? I thank all our partners who have helped Ukraine with air defense. These are different countries. The United States, Germany, France, Britain, Norway, Italy, Romania, Sweden, the Netherlands, Slovakia, the Czech Republic, Bulgaria, Poland, the Baltic States and other countries. Patriot, Nathans, Irish Tea, Raven, Hawk and other systems. We can't talk openly about everything now, but the Ukrainian Sky Shield is already more powerful compared to the last year. It has greater capabilities, but unfortunately it does not yet fully protect the entire territory. And we are working to make it even better. Every country, every leader who helps us bolster our air defense helps protect lives. The problems that the enemy is looking for in Ukraine are very much in, our, in Russia itself which has a limited margin of safety. What do we do about it and witness the collapse of Putin's regime? Why? When? We must simply withstand the enemy's onslaught and win. Nothing else. And let Russia does all it can to lose. And I would say it is doing all right these days. Russia was not elected to the UNESCO executive board. The era of Russian influence in the world is coming to an end. Terrorist regimes simply are 
quite uncomfortable to live and work with. They are destructive. They have no place at the heads of significant international organizations. Russia's barbaric behavior is incompatible with the principles and objectives of UNESCO. I mean, how it can be otherwise while Russian troops deliberately destroy Ukraine's civilian infrastructure, schools, museums. Russian terrorist attacks affect UNESCO World Heritage Sites, in particular the historical center of Odessa city. The Russians are plundering the temporarily occupied territories. Before fleeing from Husson, they simply stolen everything from museum collections and archive funds of the city. This is not a chance, but a system, a pattern, a policy, not separate, isolated case. This is a Russian way. The occupiers destroy Ukrainian library collections, try to block access to Ukrainians to education in their native language and prevent them from meeting their natural cultural needs. For the first time in history, Russia has been outstayed from the UNESCO executive board. The era of Russian influence is over, and rightly so. Russian terrorists have no place at the head of significant international bodies. Russia's international role will only continue to weaken. Volodymyr Zelensky, president of Ukraine on social network X, formerly Twitter. As a cancer, as a disease, Russia spoils all it touches, causing irreparable damage to the environment. In Ukraine, environmental reserves are destroyed. Safaris on rare animals are arranged. The ecosystem of the lower reaches of the Dnipro River is completely destroyed. And the forests of Ukraine are burned. What a great example of a great Russian culture left for descendants, right? It was Henry Keane on UATV English hoping to give you enough of how truth in easy enough terms. On our daily wrap up today, please comment, like, and subscribe. Let us know what you think on the matter in the comments below. Your opinion matters a lot to us. Stay safe and tuned for more. See you soon.